Have you ever been the last person to show up for a party with a whole bunch of friends and then you have to go say hello to every single person individually? Yeah, it's annoying and it's something that I hate myself, but it's actually a good representation of what a linear search algorithm is like. Most of my friends, you know, they show up somewhere or they show up to a party and they say hello to every single person. So if there's 10 people there, they're gonna say 10 hellos. If there's 20 people there, they're gonna say hello 20 times. And if there's 100 people at this party, they will go through one by one and say hello to every single person. And while it's not efficient, it is something that in computer science, we can analyze. And that would be a linear search algorithm, or it would be like a linear search algorithm. As the number of items increases, the amount of time it takes to do something will also increase linearly. So, you know, if it takes five seconds to do something for five items, if there's 10 items, it'll take 10 seconds, approximately. So let's look at page two of unit five, lab one. Uh, so we're going to be looking or using something that was already built in Unit 2, Lab 3, page 6. And I've already gone ahead and opened this uh, sample project. So what they've already done is given us a bunch of words. So a bunch of variables that contain, I mean, 1,000, 10,000, or 100,000 words. And it looks like the words are not sorted. So if things aren't sorted, it's not really easy to find them. Or if they're not organized in some sort of order, it's not very easy to find things inside of there. So yeah, I see some words. Yeah, it's not sorted by, by like the number of characters or letters or anything like that. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming the 10,000 word one is the same and the 100,000 words uh, is just the same. Yeah, so these are unsorted lists, which means that if we wanna find something in it, we have to go through every single one, each item in the list. So, um, you know, if you think about the worst case scenario, you're looking for the word that is the absolute last in the list. Um, and that's what we do in computer science. We basically think of like the worst case scenario because that could happen. And, um, and that's what we're going to go by. So if I have 100,000 words and I'm looking for one word and it happens to be the last one in, the, in this list, uh, it could take me 100,000 tries before I get the right one. So that's not very efficient when it's unordered or when it's not organized in some way. Um, but let's let's continue. Let's see what else we got in here. So it looks like they gave us a computation time of block. So I'm assuming that is going to be in, yes, it's in the variables palette, computation time of, and we can put some sort of, you know, some sort of function in here that it can run. So we can do numbers from one to, not from one to 10, that's just way too small. Let's do one to 10,000. So I made it, 10,000, let me expand this a little bit so you can see. And we can time in milliseconds, so in thousandths of a second, how long it takes the computer to, uh, to do that. So I'm gonna click on it, and it says one. So the problem is this computer that I'm using is really fast. <laughs> so let me, let's go, let's bump this up a little bit. So instead of 10,000, let's do, not 100,000, let's do uh, 10 million. So let's see how long it takes the computers to go from one to 10 million uh, on this computer. So I clicked it and it's 99 milliseconds. Let me click it a bunch more times, 41 milliseconds, 30 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds. So around 30 to 40 milliseconds each time. I don't know what happened that first time. So uh, that is pretty fast. This computer is pretty fast. Uh, so let's see. So over here in the example, they went from one to a thousand and it took 27 milliseconds. So clearly they're using a very old, very slow computer to do that because computers can, can do these things pretty fast now. Uh, but we might be able to use this block in the future to uh, compute how long it takes to do something. So actually, based on what I'm seeing here, we can compute how long it takes to sort. It looks like they gave us a sorting uh, function here. We're going to sort uh, 1,000 words. So let's see how long it takes to do that. So I'm going to click on that, and it's running. And uh, I don't know how, to, how long it'll take. So it took th 3,326 milliseconds. So that's 3.3 seconds. So one thing you could do is you can think about, um, okay, if this sorting algorithm is, is, is linear, then if I just do 10 times as many words, then it should take 10 times as long. Um, so let me just run this one more time. Uh, so it's, it took three and a half seconds or 3.4 seconds to do 10,000 words, sorry, 1,000 words, then maybe it'll take about 30 seconds to do 10,000 words. But as we'll see, that's probably not going to be the case. And let's, let's test it out. Let's bring in 10,000 words, and we're going to be anticipating or expecting that it takes about 30 seconds or 33, 34 seconds. Let's see if that's the case.
All right, and we're done. So clearly, uh, sorting is not a linear time operation because we were expecting about 30 seconds and instead it took about 328 seconds. So that's, uh, that's quite a bit. <laughs> that's quite a bit more. That's a little bit over five minutes actually it took uh, that we were just sitting here. And the fans of my computer were ramped up and the, the computer was hard at work. Um, so we only increased the amount of words by 10 times, but the amount of time it took increased by a factor of like 100. Uh, so clearly that is, uh, that is not a linear time operation. And we can go into more of that uh, in an upcoming video on what type of an operation this is, sorting actually is. Uh, but let's get back to the lab and let's see what this thing says. Uh, for number two, it says, how many five letter words are in the 10,000 words list? So what we're going to do is we're going to look through, so let's see, maybe we could use this uh, keep items block. So we're going to keep any items that have five letters, right? Is that what we're looking for? Five letter words, yep. So we can use this block, this, uh, this conditional, and we could check to see um, if the, I'm going to leave this blank in here, and I'm going to see if the word that we're looking at from the list of 10,000 words, so I'm going to put that right here, we're going to keep any of those words uh, if that happens to be the case. So out of 10,000 words, when I click on this, we're going to see how many items there are. There are 1,409 items. So, um, so there we could see uh, what that is. So about 14% of the words uh, have, are made up of five letters. Um, another thing you could do if you don't like leaving any, uh, any inputs blank is you can create like this temporary variable and call this the word that we're currently looking at and then use that here. So does the word, and so what it's going to do, it's, go, it's going to replace word with every single word that is inside of this list. Um, so if you don't like leaving the, uh, the space there blank, you could do that also. So if I click it again, you'll see that it still works, 1,409. So now what we could do is we can check to see how long that took using our computation time block. So now that I've placed it in there, when I click on it, it takes 53 milliseconds to check to see if there are five letters in the words and then spit that back. Let us know which, which of those words that is. So 53 milliseconds the first run, 52 the second, 53, 52. So about 52, 53 milliseconds, thousandths of a second. So that's pretty fast. Yours might be a little bit faster or a little bit slower depending on your computer and probably the browser that you're using and a whole bunch of other variables. Uh, let's see, what else? How long do you think it would take to count five letter words in the list that had 10,000 words? So I'm going to say if this is a linear operation, it's going to take 10 times as long uh, to go from 10,000 to 100,000. So instead of 53 milliseconds, I'm expecting 500 and um, 530 milliseconds, about that. So let's replace uh, the number of words that we're looking at let's re replace it with 100,000 words, and let's check this out. So when I click on it, I think it'll take about half a second. And it does. Five, I clicked it too fast. Uh, I'm going to click it one more time, and it says 519. So that is 519 thousandths of a second, which is about half of a second. So it looks like searching, searching through this list, is this list of words is happening in linear time. So if there were a million words, it's going to take 10 times longer uh, to do that. 10 times half of a second is going to be five seconds. Okay. So, uh, so that is it. Let's see if there's anything else that we have to do here. Uh, so we're going to, you could read through this. You could read what the difference is between a problem and an instance of a problem. Uh, and then suppose we count seven letter words. So we're going to have to predict if it's going to take more time because there's more letters or less time because there's fewer than seven letters or, or maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it just depends on the, the size of the list. So I will leave that to you to write out and think about uh, and then experiment. You could just change this to seven letters and then, uh, and then test it out and see if your thoughts were correct. But as I mentioned, here you can see the, the graph of what this looks like when we're looking at linear time operations. So as the size of the input increases, 
um, the amount of time it takes will increase linearly. So it's not like it's going to be exponential or you know increase faster as the size increases just a little bit. It's just going to be linear. So hopefully this video was helpful in explaining how linear time works or maybe a way to think about it. Um, and if you did find it helpful, I would appreciate it if you give the video a like. And if you're new here and you haven't seen any of my videos, I create videos like this solving programming challenges or doing computer science-y type of stuff. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.